Hey everybody, this is a digital photo of my wife that I took in 2014 using a Fujifilm X-Pro1 camera with a 60 millimeter X-mount lens. This is a strip of Kodak T-Max 100 black and white film with the image from that picture right here. This is a black and white print that I made of the same image last week on Ilford multi-grade resin coated paper. And if you don't believe me, watch the video. There was absolutely no funny business whatsoever. It was all straight darkroom work. I'm going to answer three questions. First one is, why would somebody do such a ludicrous thing as converting digital photos to negatives? Why would you do that? The second question is, how? And then the third is, did it work? Am I happy with the outcome? The short answer for the first question of why is, I love film. I really enjoy working with film and I enjoy darkroom work. And I wanted to be able to print my digital photos in the darkroom. The I guess the longer answer, the slightly longer answer is, imagine uh, you're one of those guys who has played guitar all his life and he has always dreamed of that sound that an overdriven tube amplifier, like a Marshall amp, produced back in the 60s and 70s that just screams rock and roll. And he's bought all these guitar pedals and effects processes, rack mount things and plugins and all this stuff over the years, emulating those tube amplifiers. And he's done a really good job. And it actually sounds exactly the same. Nobody would be able to tell a difference. But he knows. And there's two things. First one is there's all kinds of fiddly settings and everything he has to choose every time he does it too many options and you get lost in the sauce. And the second thing is he knows it's not authentic, even though it may look better than the original. One day this guy says, you know what? If I want to make the sound like a guitar overdriving a tube amp on a Marshall amplifier, why don't I just buy a Marshall amplifier, have it fixed up, get it brought into spec, plug my guitar into it and and shred away. And the guy does exactly that. And it's just a changing moment in his life. That's me with film photography. I was that guy. I spent decades trying to get the film look in my digital photography. I tried all of these different applications, plugins, and the different techniques. People would post like how they would convert to black and white, all the steps in, in uh, Photoshop or in Lightroom. And I tried every one of them. And you know, some of them are really good. I'll tell you what, uh, Silver FX Pro has a great tool. It really does a good job of it. But uh, several months ago, I had an epiphany and I realized if you want something to look like Tri-X, just go buy some Tri-X and shoot it in a film camera. It's the easiest way. You want some HP 5 Plus, just go shoot some HP 5 Plus. And if you want T-Max 100, shoot some T-Max 100. That's the reason why I am shooting on film and that's the reason why I wanted to convert some of my digital photos, my favorite ones, to film because I want to be able to print them in a darkroom and I want them to have that authentic look. This is real. In the photo, you saw my wife was wearing a yellow blouse. I didn't need to figure out, well, what shade of gray would T-Max render that yellow as? No, the actual photo was used to make this negative. Therefore, it's the exact shade of gray that T-Max would have used had I used a film camera that day in 2014. There's also another reason. I have a very uh, adversarial relationship with photo inkjet printers. And um, I've used many of them over the years. In fact, uh, one of my favorite photo inkjet printers was a really nice Epson model that I used for quite a few photos. That um, it was uh, a dye based printer. The, the inks and it had the separate cartridges and different shades of black, really nice. However, those printers are a bit of a 
prima donnas. And if you don't use them daily, the nozzles clog. And if you don't use them weekly, then they'll clog seriously. And you're going to use half of that ink trying to clear the nozzles. And then you end up buying little gadgets and tubes of snake oil that you use to put on the heads and the nozzles and try to clean it out. Let's just say that uh, maybe my last Epson printer met with some sort of accident. And I don't have it anymore. So the idea of being able to do 8x10, 11x14 prints in the darkroom on regular photo paper, that's real appealing. That's just amazing. That's what this was. This was, I just did a regular print on regular photo paper following regular darkroom processes, and I enjoyed every minute of it. That's why I do this. How do you do it? It's pretty easy. You can't do it at home. No, I'm not photographing my monitor or something silly like that, though. I bet you that probably would work. You'd probably lose your contrast or something. But there are businesses out there that will do this. It's a really hard to search term on the internet because if you search for digital conversion to film, you are going to get inundated with a billion hits for film conversion to digital because that's what everybody wants to do. And I was searching for this off and on for months. And then one day I started searching for things like slide conversions. And it turns out there are businesses that do create slides because there's apparently some market for that. So some people out there use slides in their in our workflow. And I'm not going to question them because the same businesses that do that are also capable of making negatives. And there's one in particular, a guy in New Mexico from a business called Gamma Tech that I found his website and it's a one man shop. And if you send him upload, uh, say 10 of your favorite digital photos, and I think it's about 14 megapixels, more or less, is what he actually is sampling at. If you upload them at about that, then give him $5 per picture for, in 2024, for 35 millimeter, he will send you back, well, in my case, two strips with five images each and a little extra on each end that I clipped off so it would fit in the negative holder. But, that's very reasonable. I wouldn't want to take all the photos from the Great American Road Trip, if, you know, 1,500 photos or something and send them to him. That just wouldn't be worth it. But that's not what you use a service for. You use it for sending the ones you cherry picked from your collection. And you say, man, I really would like to see this one, this one, this one. So what I did is I chose 10 photos that expressed different kinds of things that had different kinds of contrast and well i may have been biased because i had three of my wife in there but i uploaded 10 separate photos and then i waited for a week and a half because he does these uh, pretty much to order and one day my photos came i was like man my negatives arrived my negatives arrived and i got the magnifier i get my negatives out and he ships them in those little plastic sleeves the thin single negative sleeves and then those are in a heavy cardboard mailer so they're very safe i got them out and i'm i'm expecting this to look like i don't know the pixels look like minecraft pixels or something i was just expecting the worst and i got the magnifying glass and i'm looking at saying man this looks pretty good and it looks really good but the proof will be in the pudding i would have to actually print these in the dark room before i could tell whether they were good or not. And there's a few interesting things I found. Uh, for example, um, there's one of them, and I'll show you these now, I'll talk about them in a minute, but there was one that had uh, a building on the, at the waterfront. And there was, underneath the building, there's a small bird. And the bird is quite colorful, well, well bright, but the water around the bird was in deep shadow behind the bird, because it was under the building. and on that image, the one that I sent, and by the way, you, you, you can upload in many different uh, formats. I uploaded JPEGs. The one I uploaded, the, um, the, the 
water behind the bird was totally black. There was no detail there. Therefore, when he created this negative, he could not produce detail that wasn't there. So when I printed it in a dark room, that section absolutely turned black. But you can see the little bird, but all around the bird is black. And I thought, well, uh, well it actually was an experiment. I wanted to see how it would work. But I realized that next time around for something like that, I should do a little editing of the, uh, or the raw file and make an image that is uh, not blown out in either direction. That's maybe a little flat, send that to the guy and then take the negatives that he produces and use the multi-grade paper and the contrast filters to adjust for the contrast that I want to see. So let me just show you how this worked out. I think it's great. I was super happy and I'm going to do a lot more of these in the future. This is the very first print I made from these negatives. And I was actually pretty concerned as I was looking at this on the enlarger. I just couldn't see any sharpness and it was really bothering me. Here's the original. And you could see there really wasn't too much sharpness, except maybe in the middle of the rope here, these strands in the center. And that was where I was focusing. I like this one. It turned out well. And I, it was giving me a good feel for this process. So then I went on to this one here. And I tried to get the blacks to be not totally black and the whites to not be totally paper white, leaving uh, some highlights in the, the crystals. And I think I'm happy with what I achieved. Here's the original. And it's up to you to decide if you like the version with the color, with the, the green needles, uh, better than this version. But the detail, look at the, the detail in the ice crystals. That's really satisfying. And with that, I gave this photo a shot. Here is the original, and you can see her in her uh, the yellow top and the blue jeans. And of course, this is the print. And this is the 8x10 photo I made. It's going to be a little tricky, but you could see the, um, like the detail in her blouse there, the stitching. And if we go, let's go somewhere else, we'll look uh, her hair, the pattern on, on her bag. If I look at these very same details in the color version, you'll see that it's sharper in the color version. Read what Ansel Adams says about sharpness. When he's talking about uh, circles of confusion and things like that, he points out that it's really all about where you're going to be standing when you're looking at the photograph. If you have an 8 by 10 and you're going to be standing three or four feet away from it, it is absolutely perfect. If you're going to be walking up and looking at it with a magnifier like this, then maybe it's not sharp enough. But that is, these are sharp. This, these are good. Here's a pier in Connecticut, and this is near Stonington. Here's the original color print. And here's the black and white. Which one do you like? This is a photo that I printed 10 years ago. And this has been hanging on my wall without glass or anything, just stuck with magnets onto a, a piece of sheet metal that I painted black where I put these photos. And you could see all the detail and color. And it was printed with a, a dye-based printer. So the colors stay true over time. It's fairly archival, even though the mat is starting to yellow. Maybe I should remount this. And you can see a lot more detail than you can see in the black and white prints. Um, the bird, the, the little bird there is amazing when you focus in on them. And all the colors and the, 
the details here, all the colors over here. Well, when I went to print this, I went and did my, here's my initial test strip. And it was tricky. I didn't want to have the sky completely white, but I didn't want to have everything look gray. And this was my very first print. You can see right here that everything looks very flat. And I think I worked a little too hard on making sure the bird would stand out. And I dodged the bird a little much because it's like, here's the bird and there's everything else. This is the one that I finally came up with. And you could see the bird, I dodged him. And the color, you could see I just barely got away from having paper white. And there was nothing I could do about this section here. The photo that I sent was solid black around the bird. There was no way I was going to get detail where there was no detail to be had. Oh, here's two more photos of my better half. I'm very happy with the photos of my wife. These black and white photos. And I'll show you here the images. Oh, here's the the image with her with a birdhouse in the background in color. And you can see it here in black and white. Likewise, if we go here, this is she's in front of our church. And you can see the uh, in color, you can see the bright color of her blouse. And if you go to black and white, that's muted. And it's more of a focus on her. This is Bluff Point in Connecticut. And the way I did this one, using the f-stop printing, you can see I chose a 20-second base and went half-stops above and below. Now here's the original of this photo. And look at all that beautiful color. And here's the black and white. Here's one that I, I remember taking this photo about maybe 10 years ago, and this was at a, a small, old aging factory in Crosswicks, New Jersey. And they've since torn this factory down. It was the Crosswicks Uniform Factory. And I'm, so I'm glad I got the photo. When I look up close at the original, here's the original. When I look up close, I see a lot more detail in the siding. And when I look at my print, I just don't see that detail. However, it's not because it wasn't in the photo. I think it has a lot more to do with the different shades of color allow you to see that detail. I'm very happy with the way this one reproduced. And I have no issues putting this one on my wall. I'm not happy with this one. I couldn't print it in a way that I found satisfactory. And one of these days I'll get around to printing it again. Here's a print I made about 10 years ago, and this has been on my wall for all that time. And so it's a little grubby and it looks pretty good. The grass is kind of dark in this photo and you see the bike, you see colors here. And when I printed it in black and white, my first print where I got the bike the way I liked it, the whole top is washed out. So then I went in burned the top and dodged the bike. I, and it really doesn't look right. I'm going to have to fiddle with this some more. I might be able to rescue it. I don't know. This was really cool. I was happy when I found this service. And when I printed these negatives, they looked great. I couldn't see pixels in there. It's the grain was the only limiting factor. And if you want to do something, uh, if you need tighter grain, he will do uh, medium format. It's a little bit of an extra charge for that, but he'll do medium format. You've got to send a photo that has a higher resolution, and then you'll get that. For me, these the, the T-Max was spot on. I'm not printing big posters. I'm printing maybe 11 by 14 max, and this was just right.
that's really all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Now go out and shoot a roll.